What is going on everyone? Welcome to today's video. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ben Richardson. I'm a personal trainer. I'm also a chemical engineer. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about five foods high in vitamin D that increase testosterone levels. If you're new here, I want you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel because it's gonna teach you how to live a healthy and sustainable life through nutrition, through fitness, and lifestyle decisions that you make in general so that you can naturally boost and increase your testosterone levels and feel like a freaking beast of a man. So go ahead and subscribe and turn the notification bells on too so that you don't miss out on any of my latest videos. So vitamin D is involved in over a thousand different chemical reactions in your body. So so if you're not getting enough of it, that means that 1,000 of your bodily functions aren't operating at full capacity. Vitamin D is also one of the 24 essential vitamins necessary for human survival. And even though it's called a vitamin, it's actually technically a steroid hormone because it regulates things like fertility, muscle growth, hormone secretion, and libido. Hands down, the best and absolute source of vitamin D is from natural exposure to the sun, but there's also a plethora of benefits in getting it from your diet. Vitamin D is most known for its ability to strengthen bones, but there are also many other benefits to increased vitamin D intake, like supporting your heart health, your testosterone levels, and your immune system. So as far as a good number to shoot for, that kind of depends on whether or not you're deficient. So if you are deficient, you probably want to take anywhere between six to 10,000 IUs per day so that you can correct that deficiency in a few months. And if you're not deficient, usually anywhere between three to 5,000 IUs is plenty to keep your vitamin D levels nice and high. However, most men are not getting enough vitamin D, which is kind of why I'm making this video about foods that are high in vitamin vitamin D. So with that being said, I think I've done enough rambling about vitamin D. Let's go ahead and just jump into this list of foods. So food number one is mushrooms. Mushrooms are an awesome source of vitamin D along with a lot of other testosterone boosting micronutrients like choline, potassium, and copper. White button mushrooms are especially high in fungal polysaccharides that effectively inhibit an enzyme called aromatase. Now aromatase is a protein that converts testosterone into estrogen. So this is a good thing that you're inhibiting this protein because you don't want your testosterone being turned into estrogen. So again, inhibiting aromatase, this protein, it is going to prevent that from happening as much. Now, something worth noting about mushrooms is that they are high in vitamin D2 rather than the more bioavailable cousin of it, vitamin D3. So vitamin D2 is about 30% as effective as restoring serum vitamin D levels as its cousin vitamin D3. But mushrooms are worth noting because they're very low in calories, which is great, especially if you're trying to get lean, which is gonna boost your testosterone levels. And number two, they're easy to add into foods and recipes. And number three, they're loaded with vitamin D2. So even though vitamin D2 isn't as potent as vitamin D3, it's still going to make a big impact on your serum vitamin D levels because mushrooms are, they're just that rich in vitamin D too. Food number two is wild caught fish. So oily fishes in particular, like salmon, are especially high in vitamin D, uh, particularly vitamin D3, which is that cousin of vitamin D2 that I was just talking about with the mushrooms. However, you should pay attention to the sourcing of your fish because you don't want to be buying farmed fish. That's why I specifically say you want wild caught fish because wild caught fish is much higher in the omega-3 fatty acids, whereas farmed fish are higher in the inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids. And by the way, in case you didn't know, these fatty acid molecules are named according to the double bond position from the final carbon atom in the molecule, which is called the omega carbon. So a little fun fact for you. So an omega-3 fatty acid contains a double bond at the third carbon atom from the omega carbon, and then an omega-6 fatty acid contains the double bond on the sixth carbon atom from that omega carbon. Sorry, I'm such a nerd about chemistry. I mean, like I mentioned, I'm a chemical engineer, so I can't help myself. So anyway, chemistry lesson over. I'm not gonna get too 
much into why you shouldn't take fish oil supplements as a substitute for actually eating fish in its natural form. If you want to learn more about that, feel free to check out this video. Once you're done watching this one, I talk a lot more about polyunsaturated fats in that video, and that'll give you a nice rundown on why you don't want to be using fish oil supplements. But eating fish um, in its natural form, that's much better. Food number three is organic grass-fed milk. So here's the thing about milk. It's either going to be really bad for you or really good for you, depending on what type of milk you buy and how it was processed. So milks that come from conventionally raised cows, that milk is awful because those cows are pumped full of estrogenic chemicals, a lot of artificial hormones, lots of antibiotics, to, and all of these chemicals kind of fatten up the cow more so that farmers can make more money per cow. And all of those chemicals also do keep the cow alive for longer, and they cause the cows to produce milk on a much more continual basis basis and that's honestly just not healthy. I'm not a vegan or anything, but I absolutely do respect the convictions of vegans because I do think this is very cruel and it's an unnecessary way to treat cows. And that's why I specifically say you want to be buying organic grass-fed cows. That's what you wanna be drinking. Milk is also rich in um, micronutrients like calcium and several B vitamins, and it's a liquid form of protein, so it's a little bit easier on the digestive system. I used to drink milk as kind of a nightcap type drink, and it usually helped me tremendously in getting a really good night's sleep, and getting good sleep is also very important for keeping your testosterone levels nice and high and healthy. So try getting some organic grass fed milk into your diet, try drinking it like an hour before you go to bed and you'll probably notice some improvements in your sleep. So food number four is eggs. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos at this point, I probably sound like a broken record and you're probably sick of hearing me talk about eggs at this point. But the reason that eggs keep coming up is that they are just so chock full of nutrients. I personally feel my absolute best whenever I'm consuming anywhere between three to four eggs every single day. Eggs are a great food to eat regularly because they're not necessarily super high in one particular nutrient, but they have a very diverse range of nutrients in them. So eggs contain little bits of vitamin A, a little bit of all the B vitamins, vitamin D3, which is kind of why they're relevant to this video, vitamin E, zinc, selenium, choline, and HDL cholesterol. I recommend getting eggs that are laid by chickens that get plenty of exposure to the sun. So free range chicken eggs are going to be your best bet here. Your absolute best bet is to find a local farmer or hit up a farmer's market or something and ask the chicken owners about how they raise their chickens. Are they cooped up all day without getting a lot of sunlight exposure? Are they pumped full of a lot of hormones and antibiotics? Or are they free to roam about outside and live healthy lives like they're supposed to? It does make a difference. So do a little bit of homework and do a little bit of digging because good quality eggs are well worth the investment. Then food number five is oysters. So oysters are very well known for their testosterone boosting effects and their vitamin D3 content certainly does contribute to that. Presumably Casanova ate about 50 oysters for breakfast in the morning to maintain his libido back around the 1800s and whether or not that's true, I have no idea, but based on what we now know about nutrition, he may have actually not been too far off on that. So I spent about 20 years of my life in Southern Maryland and oysters are an absolute staple over there on that kind of northern side of the East Coast. In fact, every October, the county that I lived in held an oyster festival because it really is almost like a whole culture there. So anyways, oysters are a great source of vitamin D3 as well as a lot of other testosterone and thyroid supporting micronutrients like iodine, zinc, selenium, and copper. Same idea applies for oysters as fish. I wouldn't buy farmed oysters for similar reasons to not buying farmed fish. There's really no substitute for fresh wild caught seafood, whether it's oysters or fish. 
Oysters can get kind of expensive though, especially if you don't live near the water. But the good news is that you probably only need to eat them about once or maybe twice a week to get all of the nutritional benefits that come from them. So add some oysters onto your list of foods high in vitamin D and you'll be boosting your testosterone levels in no time flat. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And again, if you're new here, I do want you to subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna be posting content like this every single week on ways that you can use nutrition, fitness, and lifestyle decisions that you make in general to boost your testosterone levels naturally and feel like a freaking beast of a man. So go ahead and subscribe because I do post videos like this every single week. If you made it to the end of the video, I really appreciate the support and I do hope you got a lot of insightful tips out of this video. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.